Hello, uh, everyone. At the time of filming, <clears throat> I don't know if this is going to be a Patreon members exclusive video or if it'll just be a bonus video that I put out publicly. Uh, we'll see, like, if I can fit that into the schedule somehow, but I just, I don't know at this time. So it's pretty rare that I will not finish a book when I start it. Because it, it's more common for me to not finish a series after reading the first one or two books, but it's rare for me to start a book, get any length of time into it, and then not complete it. And when I do DNF a book, it's even rarer for me to speak about it here, because I feel like it's in some ways a little unfair. You know, it's like looking at one corner of a painting and then deciding whether it's good or bad, or watching the first five minutes of a movie and deciding whether it's good or bad. Like, you can't really say for certain until you have a complete picture of it. So that's why I don't usually make videos about books that I don't finish, but there are enough, there have been enough requests for me to cover Forgotten Ruin that I feel like I should talk about it at least a little bit, and I really didn't want to finish it because it's bad, so here we are. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So Forgotten Ruin has a great setup. Like, from the moment I heard about this book, I thought, yes, that sounds right up my alley. Let's check it out. It's about a bunch of uh, U.S. Army Marines from the modern day being sent to a fantasy world where they have to fight orcs and ma magicians and stuff. And it's a little more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it. And it sounded awesome, but... It wound up being dumb, boring, and, above all, obnoxious. Look how they mess with my boy. Like, it was just annoying and difficult to get through, so I gave up at a little after the 25% mark in the book. It honestly feels like it was written by somebody who is unfamiliar with military science fiction and unfamiliar with fantasy. Because that, that's what this book is. It's essentially combining fantasy and military sci-fi, but it feels like it was written by somebody who's unfamiliar with either genre. Like, they're just trying to mash together vague ideas about both of them that they've absorbed through osmosis over the years, but they don't really understand any of them. For example, the heroes just sort of mow down baddies with their modern weapons. They are heavily outnumbered and surrounded, by thousands of orcs, and at the beginning section they're getting attacked a bunch, and they don't have any shortcomings with their weapons or anything, they don't have any sort of interesting tactics, they are just there, and they mow down the baddies, and then they win. It feels like they're just going, yeah, we're awesome, we're tough, we're army rangers, we're the best, parentheses, we're only the best and the most awesome and the toughest, because of our amazing technology and we don't seem to have any real skill sets or intelligence outside of that. But we're still awesome and the best. And some of you who've read further into this book and the sequels might know that it's, it changes after that and you might come in and say, oh, well, actually it gets a little different. And even if that's true, that's a bad way to pull in the audience. You know, because you want to make it clear at the beginning of the story that, yes, th these guys are in danger. You want to make it clear to the audience that if they screw up, then bad things will happen to them. But that doesn't feel like the case here. It feels like, again, they're just pointing their weapons in that general direction and then spraying into the horde, and then a bunch of the horde dies and then runs away, and then some of them come back later, and you repeat the process. See, The Lost Regiment, which you should go read that and or watch my video on it, because those books are genuinely great, has a pretty similar setup, but it actually does this well, because yeah, the heroes have more advanced weaponry, but their weapons still have a lot of limitations, and they are still at a severe, severe disadvantage in almost every way. And so, as a result, they still have to be smart, they still have to manipulate the enemy in some ways and get them to act in a way that the heroes want them to act. And when they don't always do that, the heroes have to react to that and switch up their plans on the fly, and, like, it just makes for a much better story. And without that sense of danger, there's no real tension, no conflict, and no real story at all. The main reason that I gave up on this, however, is the narrator slash protagonist. I actually don't remember what his name was, and I know I could go look it up, but I literally just don't care. I will say this, the, the narrator slash protagonist, I'll, I'll call him one or both of those, I don't know, <laughs> but he, he does have personality, I'll give him that. You know, he's not just a complete blank slate tough guy or blank slate who's just a pair of eyes for 
us to uh, watch the story through because this is told in first person perspective. He does have personality. He's just really obnoxious and I didn't like spending time with him. You know, he, he keeps going on about, he, he goes on these weird tangents about how army rangers are tough and don't let other men sleep with their girlfriends. What the hell did you just say? Again, th this just comes completely out of nowhere. It's literally, literally he sees his commanding officer arguing with somebody and he's like, our commanding officer is tough. Unlike dudes who let other men sleep with their girlfriends. Like, it just comes completely out of nowhere. <laughs> the word projection gets thrown around a lot these days. <laughs> Uh, and I hate to sound like I may be watering down the term like a lot of people have already done, but I feel like if you're in a situation which has nothing to do with sex, nothing to do with people cheating on their partners, and you just instantly start thinking about other dudes having sex with your girlfriend, I feel like you're just, you, you have something you need to work through. And I don't want to come right out and accuse the author of feeling that way just because the protagonist of his book feels that way. But, again, it's kind of hard to tell because this just, it's just so out of left field. Narrator also describes a lot of stuff by just referencing old movies and then leaving it at that. Like, in the first chapter, he does this three or four times. It's really obnoxious. But, for example, the orcs, when he sees them, he says that they look a lot like the orcs from the Ralph Bakshi animated adaptations of Lord of the Rings. You know, less so the Peter Jackson ones and more the animated ones. Like, he, he specifies that. Madness can't run. And then he doesn't really describe them anymore at all beyond that. So it just feels lazy. And, and if they did it once or maybe twice, then... I wouldn't think too much of it, but again, they do it multiple times in the first chapter, and they continue doing it after that. Like, there's another character who's with them uh, who is a woman, and he says that she kind of reminds him of the Baroness from G.I. Joe, so he just refers to her as the Baroness. And, it, like, it, 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 are you going to use any imagination or creativity at all, man? Or are you just going to say, oh, yes, uh, remember that other thing that you know? Yeah, just put that in here. And I've seen authors do this occasionally, like uh, Redemption, the Critical Drinkers book, is basically entirely this, where they just take aspects from other stories and other characters and stuff and mash them all together without really changing anything or making them fit together properly. Narrator also likes to go on about how, oh, this is a lot like fantasy stuff, but I don't know much about that. I had to hear it from one of the other soldiers because I'm not a nerd, which is just weird. Again, like it feels almost like he's saying that I'm a tough army ranger, I don't have time to play Dungeons and Dragons and know about Lord of the Rings or anything like that. But at the same time, before he joined the army rangers, he was a college student? Like, like he, he's a linguist, that's his job. So he went through college and learned other languages. I think at one point it's mentioned that he's fluent in eight languages and he can kind of get by in a bunch of others. So he's their main interpreter and he's the one that's in charge of trying to learn how to speak to all the people in this world, like the orcs and such. And I don't know, it just, it, his constant going on about how, I don't know much about this fantasy stuff, it just, it feels like overcompensating. It's, it, I don't know, I, it's odd and I didn't care for it. I, like, again, I'll say, there's effort with regards to his characterization. Like, he is an actual character. He's just a one that I dislike. He's very annoying and I didn't like spending time with him. The rest of the cast, again, at least in the part that I read, there's not much to say about them. They, they're they just there. The only one that sticks out in my mind is the one guy I liked. He was a sniper who is also a pagan and occasionally does pagan rituals, a Norse pagan specifically, and he legally changed his last name to Odinson. <laughs> like, th there's not a lot to say about him, but he, he's kind of fun. I enjoyed spending a little bit of time with him. So I've powered through bad parts of a lot of books before, and the beginning chunk of this book well, yeah, it was pretty bad. Under a lot of circumstances, I would have just kept going and I would have been thinking, okay, maybe it'll get better later or maybe something will happen that's at least funny bad or, you know, something like that. But the reason that I wound up giving up is because I really just had no hope it would get better. And a big part of that is that the author just doesn't seem to understand that wars are fought for a reason. You know, it's like that old quote from Karl von Clausewitz where... He said, war is politics by other means. Like, you you don't just go to war for shits and giggles. You go to war because 
there is some sort of goal you're trying to achieve and you can't achieve it through peaceful means. And war should be a last resort because number one, it's a gamble. You could lose or just win but uh, expend a lot more resources than you wanted to. And number two, even if you do win, it's expending a lot of resources that oftentimes can't easily be replaced, things like money and manpower. And that brings me back to the setup for this story, right? Like, it is a bunch of U.S. Army Rangers getting sent uh, to a fantasy world, but it's not really a fantasy world. It's actually Earth in the fucking future. Take a shot, I swear to God. Every time I come across a fantasy book that does that and acts like it's doing something different, I am going to take a shot and I'll be an alcoholic by the end of the year. Yo, kill me with this <laughs> But <laughs> the point is, uh, what it, what's happened is that uh, in our world, some sort of nanomachine plague got out of control and it's just destroying technology, destroying machines, destroying everything. And it's also killing people and rewriting their DNA. Like that's how orcs and elves and stuff in the future uh, came about because the nanomachines rewrote things. And so the US government said, okay, we're gonna take a bunch of military personnel and stuff. We're gonna send them through this time machine, which we just built. And we're gonna send them two or three years into the future and then the plague should have calmed down and we can reestablish the government from there. But something goes wrong and it winds up sending them 10,000 years into the future instead. And so again, we have these, this isolated, relatively small group of soldiers who are low on supplies. They, they have this machine with them, which they call the Forge, which is like a very advanced 3D printer and it can make more ammunition and stuff for them, but it can't keep up forever. That's a the one source of tension from the beginning of the book, although it doesn't work that well. And uh, again, basically they're just there to try and make contact with the other groups that came through because they don't know where all of them are. And again, they're gonna reestablish the American government. And their plan for doing that is apparently just to kill everyone in sight. Yeah, like don't try to communicate with the orcs and see if you can come to any sort of understanding with them. J just start fighting people. You're honestly an idiot. And I thought that was stupid when it first came up. I was like, well, okay, guys, you, you got to do something eventually. Like, you, you have a parlay. You could maybe come to an understanding. Like, maybe you don't need to be killing each other. Uh, but I knew that there was truly no hope when it got to a part where the commander of the narrator literally tells him to go and murder a civilian overseer because he's annoying and he's advocating for, hey, we should talk to the locals. Like, we, we can't keep up fighting like this forever. We're gonna have to figure out the geopolitical situation and find a way to insert ourselves into it. Like, you will have to do that eventually. That's your job. Again, literally, those were their orders. Reestablish the U.S. government in the future, when they land. And sure, it's going to be more difficult and different than they thought it would be, but they can do that. But they're not listening to their civilian uh, uh, authorities which is literally just a coup. Like, that's literally just the military taking over. Uh, I, I guess you could maybe consider this area to be under the control of the U.S. government. But again, it's literally just the military taking over in a coup. <laughs> like, military sci-fi does dabble in fascism pretty frequently, but it's weird for it to be this fucking blatant about it. Like, war is good for its own sake, Anyone who tries to make peace is stupid and foolish, and also, if you try to make peace, I will murder you. Fuck off, Hitler. <laughs> so really, that's why I wound up giving up. Like, the author seemingly doesn't understand what war is and how it works on a very fundamental level. And if you're going to be writing military science fiction, you gotta understand that, at least. You know, I, like, uh, authors like David Weber and William Fortson, sure, I may not agree with their politics, and I may not agree with the politics they put in their books, but they understand how war works and why wars happen on a very basic level, and the author of Forgotten Ruin doesn't seem to understand that. So I, I just knew, okay, this is not going to get better, and that's why I gave up. So Forgotten Ruin, do I recommend it? Fuck no. <laughs> no, not at all. If you want to read about somewhat modern technology going up against uh, fantasy and magic stuff, Read Hell's Gate by David Weber. Those books are not perfect, but they are a lot better than this. And I don't have much else to say. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, check out my merch store. Goodbye. Hello there. This is the end of the video, which means all the patron names are gonna be here on screen. My $10 and up patrons are 
Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Brother Santodes, Carolina Clay, Ich bin Langweilig, Kiana Arms, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Michael and Katie Hake, Mr. A5013, Proscriptions of Zhuo Jang, Rovi, Psych XS, Slumbering Jellyfish, Observing Outer Space, Tesla Shark, Toa Michael, Ve Victus, and Wesley. All these people, all the other names, you're all great. Also, shout out to my YouTube channel members who aren't here, but they also get access to things like early access to videos, they get one exclusive video a month, you know, that sort of stuff. It's great. If you feel like Doing that, either join Patreon or join the channel. Or just like the video, comment, subscribe to my channel, share it around, make sure it gets to people. Uh, I also have merchandise available, so check some of that out if you're curious. Uh, don't have anything else to add, but, you know, you're all still watching, so I may as well keep talking. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.